your life in the interview that he's given this morning. OK, Nicholas, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Six minutes past nine, police officers often bemoan the amount of paperwork that their job generates these days, but former force inspector Claire McIntosh has turned it into another career by becoming a writer. Claire drew on her own experiences personal and professional when writing her debut novel, I Let You Go. It's about a hit and run accident and she's become the fastest selling crime writer this year. Congratulations, Claire. Thank you. That's great news, isn't it? It's very exciting. <laughs> um, just tell us a little bit. So you were, you were a police officer and were, did you have to write a lot and did you enjoy it even? I did. I think I was one of, one of the few of my colleagues that actually quite enjoyed putting a, a file together and doing paperwork. Um, I always, yeah, I always quite liked writing statements and, and telling stories. I think, you know, I, I, I write stories now yeah. and I felt I spent quite a lot of time in the police telling victims' stories and witnesses' stories. Mm. And this story that, that you've written is about a, a young single mother walking home with her little boy from school and he's hit by a car in the rain which then disappears and there are very few clues for the police to follow yeah, up. Yeah, that's right. So it's a book about the consequences of, of something horrific that happens and the way that um, that sort of trauma impacts on our relationships and the choices we make. Uh, and it's about uh, a past catching up with you in a, a rather chilling way. Mm. Um, it's inspired or sort of inspired or based the starting point was something that you had dealt with was it as a police officer? Well I didn't deal, deal with it myself but when I right. started in um, the police in Oxford there was a hit and run in um, Oxford that killed a child and it was a, an absolutely horrific incident that caused shockwaves throughout the whole city and it really stayed with me and I couldn't quite come to terms with how anybody could do something so horrific and then drive away and I found it, it, it difficult to know how any mother could cope with that sort of trauma and it yeah it sort of provided the catalyst for the story. I mean you lost one of your children to meningitis when they were, I did. When they were very young. To what extent did you, having had that experience, it would have given you more of an insight than most people will have as to how that feels? Yeah, absolutely. So my, my son was five weeks old when he died and um, it, I suppose what it did was make me realise that you, you do keep going. I think we all, it, 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 it's something that you think is unimaginable and then when you live through it you realise that of course you have to keep getting up every morning and looking after your other children mm. uh, and there is quite a lot about grief in in the book and Jenna my central character is is grieving for for her her baby her son um, but it's um, yeah I, I suppose I, I used my personal experiences to to a great extent mm. when writing um, it what's very obvious when you read the book is 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 that I didn't know when I was reading it that you were a police officer at the beginning so it's, it's very obvious you really know the intricacies and this kind of relationships that are going on as well which is very mm. interesting to read yeah it's um I, I mean I love reading crime um, but I get quite frustrated I suppose when uh, when procedure isn't quite the way it should be <laughs> so um, you know I've got a little bit of an inside track I suppose I think in, in other crime writers would be jealous of that you see it's uh, it's it makes it very easy for me you know it's very the, lazy of me to write crime really what's the, what's the most free common mistake crime writers make about police and the procedures then? <sighs> But I'm, I'm not sure now. There are lots of forensic issues that perhaps wouldn't happen mm. um, and the speed of things that, you know, results come back in, in a heartbeat and we all know actually they take about six months to come through. Um, it's more about the, the way police officers talk to each other, I find, in, in books. They all seem to call each other inspector or sergeant and really they all, everyone just uses first names and, you know, so it's more about the authenticity mm. Mm. of relationships and I quite liked writing scenes that I knew were very authentic um, and there is a there is a police officer called Kate is that is she based on you or is that because she's very tenacious isn't she <laughs> she is but she's also a bit naughty so no she's <laughs> not based on me um, I, I th I'm sure there are little bits of me in yeah. the book um, but no I keep I keep being asked by former colleagues whether this character is them or that character is them they're all made up all right. It's been hugely. Says that with a raised eyebrow. I mean, the, the, the rave reviews plastered all over the the paper back it's edition. It's been amazing. It's, it's been a fantastic success for you, and you're building on that by helping other authors and since starting up your own literary festival. I did. Yeah. I, Where is it? I started uh, Chipping Norton Literary Festival. Um, so I thought Prime Minister's 
backyard. Really, yeah, isn't it? yeah. I thought I might be bored when I left the police, um, so I started a, a literary okay. festival. Uh, and I and I love the lit fest circuit, so I go to lots of lit fests. I'm at the um, uh, Theakston Old Peculiar Festival this weekend in Harrogate, which is lovely. So I like I like talking at lit fests, um, and so starting my own seemed like a good idea at the time. Mm. Was it difficult? Did you get a lot of people turning up? Yeah, we did. We had, we had, it was great. We started sort of, you know, with a bang with some really big authors and we've carried on every year. So I've stepped back now. I'm not Because authors do like anymore. to go out, I mean, having been on their own for a long time, they, they, they don't mind travelling a couple hundred miles to speak to 40 or 50 people, do they? Well, <laughs> I think it depends on the author. Um, most authors, they just like getting out. Um, you know, I think some, some perhaps only like to, to turn out, out to a really massive audience, but mostly I think we just like getting out and talking to readers and meeting other writers because it's a very insular job mm. and we're in our little sort of writing garrets for 99% of the year. So to get a chance to go out and, you know, have, have some fun is, is, is great. So this book's doing really well. Um, is the next one sort of halfway? Where are you with it? The next one is uh, due with my editor on the 31st of July. <gasps> um, so where... Uh, which will be fine. <laughs> I mean, how it's much written? have you got to go? Well, it's, it's fine. It'll be, it'll be in. It'll be, be on said, her desk. Yeah, but... That <laughs> She's watching. The, the question was, she is watching. how much more have you got to write? I've, well, I have, I've written the whole thing. Um, yeah. I've just got a little bit of tweaking to do. I'm very conscious that the, the kids break up from uh, school in about three days' time, and so I've got quite a lot of work still to do. But so you've got to, it's all sort of plot wise, you just got to. It's all, it's all done. I just polish. need to, yeah, polish a little bit. Is it a crime novel? It's another psychological thriller. Psychological uh, thriller. Set yeah. in London about women who are stalked on the underground. Mm, okay. Mm. And, and you say psychological thriller rather than crime thriller. You think there's a big distinction? Uh, yeah, I think there is. And this, and, and this book, my first book, I Let You Go, is, is a psychological thriller, really. Um, it has it just a, happens to have police people in yeah, it. Yeah, it has a procedural strand, um, but it's, it's more of a thriller, I think. And what are you reading this summer? What am I reading? What will you be reading? You said you're a, gr you're a big reader. I am a big There's reader. people going on their holidays. Oh, gosh, OK. Um, well, I'm reading... Um, so Sarah Hillary I'm reading because her, she writes one of the few... Female DIs, I think, is really realistic. Okay. So she's on my I'm list. reading a book called I'll Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. <laughs> Good Thrill. for you. Good choice. Psychologically thrilling. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Lovely to see you. That's all from Breakfast for today. We're back from six and then tomorrow when we'll be reporting on the release of the lost novel that was written by To Kill a Mockingbird author Harper Lee. Controversial. Now mm. over to Dominic Littlewood and Neasler for that brand new series about putting some extra pennies in your pocket.